Hello again and welcome to the Sports Connection, the Rockford area's most complete high school football show. I'm Samantha Rivera. And I'm Scott Lubber. Over the next half hour, we've got your week five highlights. We'll have all five Nick 10 games. Plus, we'll make stops at Lutheran, Byron, Oregon, and Dakota. We'll also be joined by a pair of coaches. Plus, we'll have our MVP, our play of the week, and our flashback segments. We begin with the monster game in the Nick 10 Friday night. Yeah, our game of the week had the 4 0 Boylan Titans taking on the 4 0 Hananiga Indians. The winner would take sole possession of first place. The Indians came in with a 23 game conference winning streak. The Titans had won nine straight conference games. Now, this game had an ominous start for the Titans on their first possession. John Stark's pass gets picked by Sam Whitaker. But Stark and the Titans bounce back on their next possession. Running back Davian Foreman gets to the edge and races in for a four yard touchdown. Hananiga though answers. Peyton Mather drops back and puts a pass on the money to Isaiah Zalaki for a 20 yard touchdown. The game is tied at seven. More offense from Boylan early in the second quarter. Stark dumps a short one to Davian Foreman. Foreman uses his shiftiness and then his speed to get up 72 yards for a touchdown and a 14 to seven Boylan lead. Hananiga again comes back. It's Christian Gomez tying the game from a yard out. Still in the second, it's Mather throwing on the run to Bryce Goodwine. He's breaking tackles and scoring to put Hananiga up 21 to 14. But before the half, Stark throws over the middle and he's got Xavier Bryant and Bryant has a 38 yard touchdown and this one was all leaving at 21 at half time. The second half though was all boiling. Good low. Goes five yards for a touchdown. Then Tristan Guile will run in for another touchdown. And then the backbreaker for Hananiga. Mathers pass is picked. And that's Jacob Chimay taking him back for a 41-21 lead. Coach Catch Tories guys, though, weren't done. Stark on a keeper will score another one from eight yards out. And then Goodlow comes right at us for his second touchdown of the night. He rushed for 150 yards as Boylan outscored Hananiga in the second half 34 to nothing for a final score of 55 to 21. That ends Hananiga's Nick 10 winning streak at 23. And it gives the Titans sole possession of first place in the conference. We won this game bad. We, the, everybody was practicing hard. We worked hard. We, we worked very good. The line, defense, we prepped hard and we played as a team. We rallied together. What was the feeling at halftime when the game was still tied up? Um, it was just like we got to work together as a team and, and battle because that's a good team and we had to go to war and we rallied and came together as a team. We prepared all week and all summer for this game actually and we respect them so much and every year they give a good fight and obviously they've been successful the past few years so it was an emotional game and at halftime we were all tied up but the second half came and we decided to get a good push for it. Obviously the pick six was huge. Uh, did your eyes light up? Just tell me what, what that play was like. Um, honestly, saw the ball come in. It was 100% just natural, just went up for it, got it. There was no one there in the lane, so I just took it for six. Hey, sometimes it just takes guts. We took it as a gut game. We took it as a mindset game. We told ourselves we're just not going to stop, and we were just going to keep going to the very end. What was the feeling like in that third quarter when you guys just completely seized control of the game? It was complete bliss. It definitely felt like some redemption for last year. Well, joining us now in the Sports Connection Hotline is Boylan head coach John Cacciatore. John, it was going to take a complete effort for any team to end Hananiga's impressive winning streak, and I think your guys came up with that complete effort. There were plenty of big plays by your offense and your defense. Um, you know, what we continue to do is I think you hit it right on the head, Scott. Uh, I thought the, this is our, our best game offensively. We're, it's been a work in progress. We're not perfect by any means, but this was, I think, the, the best we played, and it came at the right time. Uh, we still have to continue to get better. Uh, the defense has been doing a great job. And, again, you got to give Hanegas some credit. Their kid throws the ball. I thought our, our guys did a great job of not backing down. You know, for all the – you know, you've only given up six points. All of a sudden somebody puts 14 points on you. And how, you, how are you going to handle that? How are you going to react to that? I thought our kids handled that really well, even when it was 21. Uh, they handle it. And now you just have to go out there and, and play shutout football. And they, I thought they did a great job at that point of just telling themselves we're just going to focus on the positive and, uh, and, and continue to, to play football. And they did. And, and things – Fell our way. So, like you said, it was it was a complete uh, it was, a, it was a, a complete uh, game for us this week. We think of Trey Malone as the thunder in your backfield at running back. My goodness, Erickson Goodlow was running so hard in this game. He had 150 yards in two touchdowns. What did you think of his effort? So proud of, of his effort. Him and Tristan Guile both did a great job. Erickson is so incredibly fast. So where where Trey 
widens the holes when he goes through there. Eric and Moore is more like a guy who squirts through the holes. Uh, and just as soon as you, he starts beating you inside, man, he is incredibly fast to the edge. So I thought he did as good a job blocking and, uh, and running the ball tonight as, as, as we could have asked him to do. Well, your quarterback, John Stark, threw the early pick on your first possession of the night, but he did a great job in shaking that off. He played very well from that point on. Did you have a little chat with him on the sideline after the pick to settle him down, or did it just kind of happen within the flow of things? It's, it's a combination of the two. Anytime uh, we have a mistake like that, we talk about turnovers and not wanting to turn the ball over and how critical it is in order for us to have a formula to win. Uh, but it came to the shot that, uh, you know, Hanunig was playing man. We wanted to take a shot and show him we could do it, and, and the kid made it. But what we preach all the time around here is that when you make a bad play, let's uh, forget the whole thing and, we go into the next play. If you sit and think about all the bad plays, it's going to lead to more bad plays. So we try to keep our kids as, as positive as we can. John does a, as good a job of that as, as anybody, I think. The 5 o'clock start time worked perfectly because it wasn't long after the game ended that the bad weather came. But how challenging was it to get everyone ready to go for a 5 p.m. kickoff? You know, it was, it was, there, was, there was a lot of moving parts to it. Uh, from their administration to our administration, those companies, the team was changed. And, and just as soon as you think you have a routine set, you're looking at the, all the apps and all the weather forecasts, and they're tell, flat out telling you, you are playing tomorrow, you are playing on Saturday because this game is not going to happen. So, uh, man, when we got to Hananiga, and it was not, it was, it was bone dry up there. Me and Coach Zimmerman looked at each other and said, we should start at 4.30, we should start at 4 o'clock, let's get this set before the rest of it came. And, gosh, we weren't off the field 20 steps, and then the rain came and the lightning showed up. So, gosh, we were just really fortunate tonight. Uh, we set our prayers and, and it came true. Well, you go from one big game to another when you play Harlem next week. Now, I don't want to get into that game too much yet, but health-wise, how did you guys come out of this game? Does it look good for next week for everyone? Uh, we came out of this uh, pretty darn well. I think Trey, Trey could have come in and, and played in, in the fourth quarter, but there was no sense in risking it. So uh, you're right, it's a big game, and uh, our, our kids have got to weather the storm here and, and get themselves turned back up. The good news is you start playing uh, a streak like you're playing Auburn, which is a good team. You're playing North, it's a good team. Now, then you play on an E, it's a good team. We're starting to get, I hope, we're building some good habits up here so that we can uh, carry it over uh, another week as we, we take on a very, very, very good looking uh, Harlem team. Our thanks to Coach Cacciatore for joining us. We'll have more Nick 10 action coming up later, but next we focus on the big Northern Conference with games at Oregon, Byron, and Lutheran. Right now, let's take a look through the lens of our Sports Connection fan cam. And our camera found one little Indian fan in the stands of Hananiga. This is eight year old Peyton Seymour. She has Hananiga's spirit. Yes, she does with her face painted. And she has that number 21 painted on her face because that's her older brother, Cade Van Skelvin's number. He's on the team. Way to support your team and your brother there, Peyton. That's our fan camp. 